recording. Welcome, welcome everyone to What's New for 2024. We are so excited to dive in and show you what Seesaw is offering for Back to School. My name is Melody and I am the family coordinator here at Seesaw and I will be your host for today. A few housekeeping items before we dive in. If you have questions during the session that you would like us to answer, please click on the Q&A tab and ask them there. This ensures that we will not miss them. If any questions go unanswered, we will reach out to you and answer these after the webinar. Other comments or ideas can be put into the chat tab so all participants can view them. Find these tabs on the left and right of your screen. The handouts tab includes key takeaways for today's session. This session is being recorded. A link to the recording as well as the handout from this webinar will be shared in a follow-up email 24 to 48 hours after the session is complete. Now let's meet our panel of presenters. Let's meet our first presenter, Sarah. Sarah started her career as an educator and has a deep passion for creating equitable, inclusive, and high quality instructional experiences. After her time as a teacher and school leader, she transitioned into a career in ed tech, working in curriculum and product strategy, focused on building products that empower educators and engage students. At Seesaw, Sarah is the chief product officer where she oversees product, curriculum, user experience, and product marketing. Welcome, Sarah. Now, let's meet Erin. Erin, our Director of Curriculum at Seesaw, has an extensive career in education. She spent nine years teaching in an urban Title I school with majority multi-language learners, students before earning her master's in educational leadership from UC Berkeley, focusing on social justice. As a district admin, she served as the TK to five literacy and ELD coordinator for four years. Erin is dedicated to empowering students and families through access and opportunity in education. We are also excited to have with us Gabby. Gabby is the manager of curriculum development and operations at Seesaw. With a master's degree in elementary education, she has taught in primary classrooms, developed enrichment-focused after-school programs, and supported teachers across the globe learning how to meaningfully implement educational technology in their classrooms. Her career has been dedicated to creating joyful and impactful learning experiences to help our youngest learners create positive connections to learning. Next up, we have Brittany. Brittany is a senior manager of product management at Seesaw, leading the teams responsible for teacher and family engagement, learning insights, and setup and integrations. With over five years at Seesaw, she has worked across the product to develop features that improve administrator workflows and insights and bring families into the learning loop. Before Seesaw, Brittany led product teams at Yelp, focused on consumer research and international experiences, and holds a degree in electrical engineering and computer science from UC Berkeley with a certificate in human-centered design. And rounding out the Fantastic Five is Daniel. Daniel is a senior product manager at Seesaw. He leads the content and instruction team, which focuses on making it easier for teachers and administrators to discover, deliver, and track instruction on Seesaw. Over the past three years, he's led key initiatives like launching the Seesaw Library, revamping the assigned flows, and upgrading the school and district library to support stronger curriculum alignment. Prior to Seesaw, Daniel led product teams at Mystery Science and Zapier and holds a degree in Science, Technology, and Society from Stanford. We have amazing tools available to you 
and we are so excited to show you. Here is our agenda for today. Seesaw's evolution. Save time with simplified processes. Expanded, ready to teach lessons in the Seesaw Library. Unlock even more with instruction and insights. Let's begin now with our first presenter, Sarah. As Oops, we can't hear you, Sarah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Thank you. I've said thank you to you like three times, Melody, which I think you are deserving of all of those, those thanks. Thank you for such a kind introduction. Um, I can go ahead and get started now. I appreciate it. Um, I'm really, really thrilled to be here with you all today. Um, as a former teacher myself, I love when I get to um, talk to teachers and um, tell you about all of the exciting things that we've been working on at Seesaw. Before I talk a little bit about how Seesaw has evolved over the years, I want to talk about, you know, no matter how much we grow, kind of what remains at the core of everything we do. And so much of our core principles have been informed by the teachers who we work with um, and all of you who have given us feedback over the years about what's important to you and your students and your families. And you know, at the end of the day, we're all here because we want positive outcomes for learners, families, and, and for you all and your colleagues. So our three core principles at the foundation of what we do are that learning should be joyful, inclusive, and connected, especially when we're focused on our youngest learners, our elementary schools. We want learning to be active and hands-on with a focus on play. We, we want and need for it to be inclusive. That means everything from inclusive in terms of accessibility, removing barriers to entry, um, but also making sure that students see themselves um, in their learning and feel a sense of belonging. Um, last but certainly not least, we want learning to be connected, especially um, when students are using technology, which so often can mean, you know, kids sitting in front of a screen, heads and device. Um, we really, we really want to work to have technology be a part of a more social experience, that students are really forming meaningful connections with their peers. They're using technology when it makes sense. They're not using technology when it doesn't make sense. Um, and that families and administrators are always part um, of the learning experience with teachers and students as well. So how have we evolved? I think for those of you who have been with us um, for a long time, Seesaw is a little over a decade old. Um, and we really you know, started um, with this core use case around our multimodal tools and capturing and documenting learning in a digital portfolio. During the pandemic, um, we shifted our focus or expanded our focus to, to really serve the remote learning needs. Those of you who joined us during those years um, may have used us much more for workflow and assignment than ever before. Um, but in the past couple of years, we've kind of gotten back to our, our roots and really thought about, you know, how can those multimodal tools, digital portfolios, those workflows um, be kind of rounded out to really support high quality instruction and high quality student learning. And that's always been at the heart of what we've done, um, but we really were able to focus on that more meaningfully. Um, here you'll see kind of the expansion into curriculum, more instructional tools, more student learning tools as well. This year and moving forward um, with the strong foundation of our learning experience platform, Seesaw has really evolved into having multiple solutions for multiple different use cases, um, different needs in the classroom and in schools. So we're going to talk about, about those a little bit more today. Um, but first, let's just talk about what those use cases might be. What might you be using Seesaw for in your classroom? And I'd be curious just to hear if you want to drop it in the chat, um, kind of which one or which ones of these resonate most. But when we talk to teachers, what we hear is they want to use our learning experience platform to keep everybody in the loop for one, two, three, four, or five of these reasons. Joyful instruction and in student learning, family engagement, differentiation and accessible learning, authentic assessment via digital portfolios, 
and insights to drive data-driven instruction. Obviously, those are not mutually exclusive things. So some folks are using it for family engagement um, and digital portfolios or joyful instruction and data-driven um, data driven insights. Really what we want to do is we want to make sure that Seesaw best serves what you need um, to kind of power your full elementary classroom. So when you look at what Seesaw does today, um, it does a whole lot, whether it's student reflection, empowering student voice and choice, engaging families via messaging, um, formative assessments, progress monitoring, delivering instruction, maintaining digital portfolios for student-led conferences, um, reporting home, et cetera. Um, Seesaw really supports the full elementary experience. And we do that because of the feedback you all give us about what you need and what would make your lives better and your students learning more joyful, connected and inclusive. So please, please, please continue um, to voice that, whether it's on social media or you know via your, your Seesaw connections. Um, we really hear what you're asking for and we try as much as possible um, to build out what you all need. Um, so with that said, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, um, who we know we do so many things in Seesaw. One of our core missions is to save you time and make it possible to do all of the things that you have to do in a given day. And so Daniel's gonna talk to you a little bit about that. All right. Thanks so much, Sarah, uh, for that great intro. And as she mentioned, I'm here to talk about uh, some improvements this year to make it easier to do instruction on Seesaw as a teacher. And I'm just going to start with kind of highlighting some of these features, and then we're going to get into um, a demo of them, which I'm really excited to kind of showcase uh, the power of all these features. And so um, first one up here is, is something we're calling site-wide standards. And at a high level, um, some of the value that site-wide standards brings is, is really, you know, for a district or an organization, allowing you all to use uh, localized standards for your state or for your region. And so if you're operating in Texas, you can use TEKS effectively. Um, but if you're, you know, teaching in Western Australia, you can use those learning standards instead. And so um, I think that's a really great value add to using kind of Seesaw out of the box um, together uh, as a teacher, as a, as a set of teachers. Um, and um, to start, we're going to support over 90 uh, standard sets across the U.S., the U.K., uh, Canada and Australia. So really thinking about um, our, our primary territories there. Um, and as a teacher, there's there's some real value here. and We'll get into that in the demo, but at, at a high level, really want to emphasize um, the time that you all will hopefully save when you're measuring student performance against these standards. And we've got new flows to show you um, for browsing standards in the Seesaw library and other libraries. We've got new flows for you all to tag activity of the standards and then ultimately grade them and see that rolled up uh, for your insights and progress. And so that's a, the first exciting feature and it's already available in product. And uh, the other set of features I want to talk about is um, bulk assigning instructional sequences. And this is a, a feature that's unique to the Seesaw library, but it's the idea of taking a lesson, um, whether it's something from our student collection or from one of our phonics collections, and thinking about as a teacher, like how do I uh, use that sequence over the course of multiple days and really just you know provide you all with a better workflow to get that out to students in the way that you imagine teaching it. And so we'll walk through what that looks like, an exciting uh, new workflow to hit the Seesaw library as well. And then the last one here is some more tools for you all to organize my library. And so this is really thinking about uh, the collection space and being able to think through um, what are the different activities or lessons I might wanna use over the course um, of the coming school year or potentially a quarter? And you know, how do I get ahead of organizing that in a way that makes sense for me? And so that's things like creating sections, it's reorganizing activities, it's removing them you know, over time. We don't want that my library to stay too cluttered for you all. And so excited to show off some of that as well. And so with that, um, I'm going to hop into um, to Seesaw and kind of show you all each of those three features. And so let's start with site-wide standards. And so just to orient everyone, right now I'm in the Seesaw library. I'm a second grade teacher and my, te uh, my district's in Texas. So a lot of what you also see here is, is uh, based on TEKS. And so one of the first things I'm gonna do is kind of browse for a lesson. I think I've seen a lesson before in the math collections, uh, skip counting by fives, tens, and hundreds. And a really exciting uh, 
upgrade here is that automatically I'm going to see correlated standards based on my settings, right? So at this point, my administrator is already set up uh, CSAL with Teaks, and so I'm seeing that correlated Teak standards, um, which is great. And as I go to review the lesson and actually assign it, um, one of the nice things here is that uh, that standard carries over. So there's this concept of auto tagging. So whatever standards you see uh, correlated to a, to a CSAL library or, or an activity within the CSAL library, it's going to automatically come over, which is really nice, should save you some time as you're thinking about what are the right standards that you know this piece of content or this activity is meeting. Um, but let's say you know you want to add additional standards to an activity, or let's say you're creating your own activity in the future, or you've pulled something down from a community library, you want to add to it. Uh, what's really nice is that you're able to go ahead and tag additional standards. Um, in this case, you can filter down to different second grade standards that will meet uh, math. Um, but also, let's say you know there's a particular one that you had in mind. You remember it has to do with modeling. You can see all the results that will come up here that have to do with modeling. So it's, it's a quick way for you all to go in and see, like, okay, you know, I don't remember the code, but I know the general idea of what what we're trying to get after here. And so uh, that's just one experience I wanted to highlight. Um, but let me go ahead and save this tag standard. Kind of go back to assigning um, this activity to the class. And at this point, it's gone out to my students. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is a little bit of a cheat because I'm going to uh, kind of fill out a response as a student. Um, but as we all know, the, the green add button helps with that. So I'm going to be uh, Brian here today. And so I'm going to go through this activity. Let's imagine I've, I've already kind of watched this video. Um, I've completed the next uh, assessment here. You know, For the sake of time, I'm just going to gloss over actually completing that. Um, but trust that I can do it. And so now at this point, I've got a piece of student work back to me. And what's really nice is that standard that I had tagged um, to that activity comes back. And so I'm able to go ahead and as I review student work, uh, assign a star rating um, to that work or assign a grade to that work and go ahead and save that. And what's really nice is if I go over into progress now and access the standards view, I can see that uh, that uh, standard pulled up and I can see the the pieces of work or the student work that are rolling up to that standard and, and understand how that works. And if I go into the activities view, I can also see, you know, how my students doing and, and the, again, the standard grade that they receive. And so again, uh, really the value here that we want to emphasize is really going from the point of, hey, I want to teach this to, hey, I want to track and uh, measure student performance at the end of the day and kind of seeing that rolled up at the class level. So. That's site-wide standards in a nutshell. Uh, go out and try it. Um, you know, your, your district should already be set up with the correct uh, standard sets, but in the event that it's not, reach out to an administrator. And so now I'm gonna shift gears a little bit. We're gonna talk about the assign all activities flow. And for that, I'm gonna grab a lesson from our science um, subject area here. I've been looking at one of our STEAM lessons on matter. And um, what I'm gonna go here is click this new button called assign all activities. and uh, that's going to bring me to a new flow. And I'm going to put this across to the side just for the sake of the demo. That's helpful if you all are getting started um, with this new flow. It's a, it's a tour, an onboarding tour. And what's really nice here, and one of the first things that I like to highlight is um, this allows teachers to think about lessons as a sequence and kind of choose the parts that are most relevant to you. And so off the top of my head, I've already done some like pre-vetting of some of this content. And I know at a very high level, I've got time for the introduction. I wanna make sure my students see that. We're gonna watch it whole class. We might also um, have a look at it one-on-one um, -on -one, or I want them to have a look at it. And I'm gonna remove the technology activity because we're not gonna to get to that, remove the art and the math. And I think we're just gonna focus on science and engineering. And there's an at-home component I want them to do and a show what you know component that I want them to eventually assess on. And so, What's really nice is already you can keep track of you know what you're not assigning to students what you are and at this point i can also think about the different days that i might teach this and so i've already done some work to kind of pre-vet and think about like okay well on, the, on day one we're going to do the intro of whole class and we're also going to think about uh, the science activity and so i want to go ahead and just assign that today we're going to go ahead and get started to it so that's no edits that i need there um, but, you know, in the future, we're going to do an engineering activity. And I think, you know, perhaps we'll do this on Thursday. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and put that date there. 
and then you know the connect and the show you know what you know or show what you know might go out later in the week as kind of a wrap up assessment. And so I'm going to go ahead and and kind of assign those out. So as you can already see, I've got, I've built a little bit of the sequence. If I wanted to, I could choose different due dates um, across different activities. I could think about the standards as we just saw. I can organize into folders. And I can also think about student groups here. If perhaps I want to differentiate a little bit with the sequence, um, certain students get a different set of activities than others. And so I'm, for the sake of time, again, I'm just going to go ahead and assign out that sequence so we can see it. Um, and I'm going to go back to the class. And what's really nice is that um, I can kind of see this uh, aligned to the calendar that I have. And so as, as I kind of said earlier, we see the intro and the science activities aligned to that Tuesday because we're going to go ahead and tackle that today. Um, and then um, I see it scheduled out in the future um, for the 25th and then those activities scheduled out for the 26th as well. And so really exciting to kind of introduce that feature, play around with us with it and hopefully it will help again think through like how do we get those sequences kind of spread out across multiple class periods and not just thinking about that single activity use case. And so the last feature I'm going to talk about are some of the improvements to our collections in my library. So I'm going to hop over to my library uh, here for a second. And I've got a sample a collection that I've pulled up here. It's focused on science. And let's imagine that over time, I've kind of built out a repository of, collect of activities and lessons here that I've just picked from the community library. I've picked from the Seesaw library, it's stuff that's really caught my attention. And so What's really nice here is I can start to think about different topics here. And so maybe we have a, a topic on erosion and weathering, and I'm gonna create a section there. And then we've got, I'm gonna pull this guy up. Uh, we've got another topic, seems like I've, I've, I've done a ton of things around matter as well. And so I'm just gonna kind of create a section here on matter as well. And what's really nice is that um, we can go ahead and reorganize activities until they're correct kind of ordering here within the sections. And so I, I know that these four are gonna go under weathering and erosion. And I know some of these are gonna go under matter. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And what's great here is that, you know, now I see it all, all structured. And if I wanted to, I could add descriptions as well for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do that, but hopefully that's a, a nice demo around, you know, the sections themselves and how to reorganize them and one last thing I'm gonna just kind of show off here is these are two activities I've used in the past. Um, I'm not gonna use them this school year and that's totally okay. I just wanna get rid of them. So you're able to just like both select them and remove those from your collections. They're no longer there, but the sections are there protected and you know, this is all great. And so um, try out these features, really excited to get them in place. And I'm gonna pass the mic now to, to Brittany who's gonna walk us through um, some new exciting features around messaging. All right, thanks, Daniel. We know that many of you rely on Seesaw's messaging features for family engagement with your classroom. And as a reminder, messaging supports one-on-one -on -one and group messages, as well as announcements, as well as scheduled messages and translations with over 100 languages to help you reach every family. Um, and we've got a few new features that we think you're gonna be really excited about. Um, one, reactions. Everybody loves reactions. Uh, reactions and messages unlocks new ways for you to connect and engage in messages with families um, through positive emoji reactions. So uh, already really exciting and helps you kind of get uh, continue your conversations in positive ways. Um, also, download messages. This has been a top feature request and it allows you to uh, quickly export conversations from Seesaw to help you meet your documentation needs that you may have in your school or in your classroom. Finally, I'd like to take the opportunity to showcase a feature in messages that I think is really exciting because it connects standards aligned learning with family communication. So connecting some of what Daniel was talking about with uh, messages and family communication. So what that is, is you can actually share progress reports with families. So I'm going to do a quick demo so that you can see what that looks like. All right, so here I am in a progress standards view uh, as Daniel was showing earlier, and I can actually click on Jody's name to see their progress report. So this actually shows uh, Jody's progress in the class for the week. Um, and I can actually click on this message to family button, which will allow me to quickly share Jody's progress with Jody's family members. It's pre uh, 
pre-filled so that you can go ahead and send that to them. You can also make any comments or additional um, notes that you'd like to make. And this will help you to connect uh, the family member to Jody's student growth and learning. All right, um, so I'm super excited to see what you all do with messaging this year to share information about classroom logistics, share student progress with families, and develop deeper connections with families as they engage with student learning. Um, now I am going to pass it on to Erin, who's gonna talk about more Seesaw Library content. Thanks, Brittany. Hi, everyone. I'm excited to share a bit about our expanded Seesaw Library content. Hopefully you've had a chance to get in there and see all the amazing research-based standards-aligned content that's ready for you to use. Uh, whenever you go into the library, you can just click. Uh, you'll see your grade level. You'll see very shortly, we're gonna have Gabby give us a demo of some of this great content, but I'd like to highlight a few of this expanded, uh, these expanded collections first. We have our highlights folder. Some of you may have that in your account, depending on your subscription. We also have our highlights collection. The highlights folder immediately connects families to this folder, so it's a great way to keep documentation and places for that tight family engagement that Brittany was just talking about as well. And then our highlights collection provides opportunities both for kind of like end of year or end of quarter growth, but also ongoing, like whether it's at the end of the unit or a child is really excited about a goal they've been working on, ways to kind of capture their learning in a, in a space that feels presentable enough that they feel like they don't have to do too much work, um, but also feels like they can really own it by kind of enhancing it with their own stickers, their voice, their video, et cetera. We also have some really incredible partnerships in our Seesaw Library. This is an area we're kind of continuing to work on and grow. Um, those two that we're highlighting right here are code.org. You'll have all these different interactive lessons that you can work with. You first come into Seesaw, you get a lot of this background content, really deeply integrated content into computer science standards. So in that example there, they're actually making a star quilt. They're going to learn about the history and the culture of star quilts. And then they're going to use their coding skills in code.org to actually create one, which is really, really cool. Uh, code.org has been an incredible partnership so far. And then Tumble Science, you're going to listen to a podcast that takes you back in time and actually meet some astronomers. Students will learn different skills that they can actually then create activities within Seesaw. And of course, because we really value both that balance of being online and offline, they're going to have a chance to try those concepts off the computer, work with a family member, make those observations um, of the sky and the universe and their learnings, and then come back to Seesaw to capture that learning. We also have our English Language Explorers Newcomers Collection. This is a collection of 10 lessons where students kind of go around their community we recommend this as almost like emergency English. So if you have a student who's brand new to the country or has very limited English skills, these are available to you, free to use. So you can go in there, um, assign them to students. Seesaw creates this very safe space for them to try out these skills and concepts. All of it's been modeled for them. There's the visual supports, audio supports already built in with English and Spanish directions in the top left corner of every lesson. Um, and it's a really great way to make sure students feel both safe and ready to participate in the school day. There is so much more coming this year. Um, those are just a few of the highlights. Uh, we also have some incredible math fluency content. You've all been asking about it. We are making it. Uh, it's going to have some really cool premium tools in there as well, which Sarah will share about shortly. Um, and we have our um, instructional templates that have been a huge hit that we're translating into Spanish along with other content, um, including grammar lessons coming soon. But before we get too much further, I'm gonna hand it over to Gabby, who's gonna give a demo of some of this amazing content. Thank you, Erin. So yes, we are going to dive into the Seesaw Library to show you all these new and exciting updates in action. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay. So in order to get to the Seesaw Library from our teacher dashboard, you can simply click on the library button here on the top left corner of your screen. And from there, you'll be dropped into the Seesaw Library full of standards aligned lessons created by the team of curriculum experts. You can always explore um, the content by searching in the search bar here, browsing timely content that's being featured for the month, or um, just by exploring the subject and theme tiles down below. At the beginning of the year, we recommend that teachers start with our 
Seesaw Essentials tile where you will find all that you need to get started during the back to school season. And here you will find the highlights collection that Erin was just talking about down below. Um, the highlights collection is broken up into two types of journaling opportunities, both portfolios here and pages down below. So the highlights portfolios are perfect for open house or conferences. These lessons allow students to capture their work inside of Seesaw across all core subject areas, thus really creating a digital portfolio for students, teachers, families to see student growth over time. And furthermore, students have the ability to leverage multimodal tools to reflect on their work using grade level appropriate prompts like you see here over on the right. Um, and teachers can edit a student's post to leave written or audio feedback on each artifact of learning, allowing students to receive individualized feedback, praise, and those meaningful insights. Let's go back. So with highlights pages, they give you more of a templatized way for students to reflect on their work on a more regular basis. So teachers can assign highlights pages across a variety of subject areas. And these are prompting students to capture their work and reflect on their learning after daily or weekly lessons. And these pages also have built-in auto-graded polls that allow students to indicate their level of confidence with a particular lesson, providing teachers with an opportunity to check for understanding and also to just continue to be responsive to students' needs. Um, both the highlights pages and portfolios can be added to the student's highlights folder that Erin just mentioned in their journals, making these reflections easily accessible for conferences, open house, goal planning, IEP meetings, and really so much more. And so to do that, um, back in your class journal, you can review you know, student work as it comes in, and um, as you are reviewing that work, and if you found it to be exceptional or something that you want to bring attention to, you can simply click on the highlights badge here. And to find a student's highlight folder, you can actually just choose the student that you want to drill down to over here, and then choose the highlights folder to jump into. And then you'll be able to see all of those artifacts in one place. And you can go and review that student's completed highlights folder with all of their work samples and artifacts, um, as well as allow the, the um, parents that or families that are connected to um, look at that teacher feedback and those insights as well. Okay, to highlight some additional content, um, we created a collection that Erin just highlighted um, to better support our multilingual students. And this is our English Language Explorers Newcomers Collection, where students are able to explore common locations like the classroom um, and practice acquiring common vocabulary that they would need to know to identify items, locations, and more to really help set up students for success as they navigate these spaces. These lessons start with um, a video introducing the vocabulary using singular and then plural nouns, and then give students opportunity to um, see, hear, and use that vocabulary with scaffolding built in on each page. So here students are able to use those nouns in a sentence and hear that sentence be read aloud with that audio that is attached to each of these sentence frames. And then they're able to find those items within a setting and also listen to the um, vocabulary word be read aloud again, kind of reinforcing those um, supports. And they're also able to hear, hear the item and record themselves saying each vocabulary word. They can progress and get instant feedback um, as they match the word to their corresponding items and kind of check themselves and make sure that they are um, correctly progressing through the lesson. 
And then lastly, they are getting modeling at each step along the way, building up their exposure to the language with every single page that they practice. So these lessons will be a great way to help students feel more comfortable and prepared to navigate those common settings during back to school and beyond. And lastly, I will give you a sneak peek of what is to come this year. We know folks have been asking about additional math content in the Seesaw Library, and we are working alongside some of our biggest districts and math experts to develop a math fluency collection that will cover addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And this is a preview of multiplication with a focus on multiples of three. Students first work to practice sense making while solving a story problem here. Students are going to receive a slow reveal of information um, like you see here. And that will enable them to determine the various ways that they can go about um, solving the problem or approaching the problem. And they're prompted to have math talks with one another all the way, really sharing their comprehension, where they have questions, their thoughts, and really engage with each other as a class or um, as partners. And then um, students are going to be able to practice creating visual models and ultimately begin to understand the role that commutative property plays um, with when you're multiplying. Um, and they have multiple opportunities to practice commutative property using various story problems, as well as practicing creating true equations um, using flex cards like you see down here on the bottom of the screen. And um, they also have opportunities to engage with independent practice. So they'll have a, a chance to practice math fluency in many different ways, including by recording um, themselves solving multiplication facts with missing products like you see here um, or missing factors like you see here. And the last one I'll demo, there's a lot within this collection, um, but the last one is going to be the Show What You Know, um, where teachers will also have the opportunity to assign their students a formative assessment so that they will have the data to see how well students are understanding each fact that they're focusing on. And of course, be responsive based off of where students may or may not need additional support. So they'll be able to practice um, writing expressions to match the various visual models that they see. They'll be able to draw a visual model to match the expressions. And they'll also be able to record themselves, hopefully fluency, fluently um, re, uh, solving all of their multiplication facts. And then again, creating those true number sentences. So this lesson is really just an example of more to come as we continue to expand the CISO library, including more math, more grammar, Spanish, templates, assessments, and more over the coming year. So with that, I'll pass the mic back over to Sarah to talk about Seesaw instruction and insights. Thank you so much, Gabby. Um, so everything you've seen up until now is available um, for for our all of our paid Seesaw customers and much of it available um, for Seesaw, uh, Seesaw teachers using the free version as well. Um, we're excited to share with you that we now have um, a new platform tier, tier called Seesaw Instruction and Insights. Um, some of your schools and districts may have opted to purchase this newer version of Seesaw. And so we'll just show you really quickly how you can know what you have access to, and then I'll tell you a little bit about what Seesaw Instruction and Insights is. So you can go into your account settings, scroll to where it says Seesaw Premium Features, click on manage subscription, and then it will list there everything that you have access to.
Um, if you're curious um, and you still have questions, I recommend talking to your um, administrator if you have a school subscription, um, but you should be able to find that information right in your account. Um, so some of you may already, and some of you may be soon getting access to Seesaw Instruction and Insights. We're really, really, really excited about this um, because it takes everything you know and love about Seesaw and just adds on top of it to deepen instruction and deepen those learning insights. So with, so with Seesaw Instruction and Insights, um, there are kind of three buckets of new features. The first um, is exclusive instructional tools and access to high quality curriculum to support instruction. There are um, insights dashboards where you can glean deep insights into student learning and performance on standards and options um, for administrators to kind of customize Seesaw to meet the needs of, of the given school or district and kind of make sure everything fits together in your ecosystem, whether you use other technology tools, um, we can kind of make that all work really nicely together. As part of Seesaw Instruction and Insights, one of the things that um, our teachers in our early feedback groups have been most excited about are the premium instructional tools. Um, you'll see these premium instructional tools leveraged in various lessons throughout the Seesaw Library. So if you're a Seesaw for Schools um, school, you can kind of poke around and look for some examples of these. But if you have Seesaw Instruction and Insights, you can create your own lessons with these tools. The first one is a read with me tool, which um, effectively you can enter any passage and um, opt for the text to be read aloud and have the words highlighted as it is read. This can support multilingual learners, um, students who are pre-readers or learning how to read, or students who may receive um, you know, modifications or accommodations for their work. And the second tool um, is our flex card tool. This is like the name implies, one of the most flexible tools um, for any subject area. And you can think of it as kind of a flashcard, but with many, many sides. And on each side of the, the flex card, you can have a video or so you can have audio, um, an image or text. You will see these throughout some of our Seesaw Library lessons. Um, the third thing is something that teachers have been asking us for for quite some time. Um, we know that one of the amazing things about Seesaw are all of the tools and the opportunity for students to express themselves by choosing the ways in which they want to respond. But we also know that sometimes too much of a good thing is no longer a good thing. Um, so we, um, as part of Seesaw Instruction and Insights, we have a new feature called Focus Mode, which allows um, teachers to choose what, act, uh, what multimodal tools are available on any given page to make sure the tools on the page are closely coupled with the instructional objectives of that page. Two more. Um, the fourth one is something we've been really excited about, I'm kind of brand new to Seesaw, is a reading fluency assessment. So think about how challenging it is to get regular data on how students, your students are doing in terms of fluency. We know running records are incredibly important. They also require that you know an adult sits in front of a student one at a time. Seesaw's reading fluency assessment allows you to get very similar data, but for all of your students, all in real time. So you can have them read a passage within Seesaw and then it auto scores the percentage correct. It highlights things like words added or words subtracted. Um, and you have a record of each student's progress on that all at once. Last but certainly not least, um, if you are familiar with our formative assessment tools um, that has been very, very popular, they've been very popular in the past year, um, we've expanded this to include a free response assessment. So instead of just um, kind of singular right wrong, multiple choice, drag and drop, we also have the ability for more open ended um, free responses that you can opt to be auto graded or you can opt to quickly grade on your own. So I'm going to turn this over to Erin. Um, the tools are a really exciting part of Seesaw Instruction and Insights. Um, also, in addition to Seesaw Instruction and Insights, we have two new curriculum packages. So Erin is going to talk about those. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, so uh, hot off the press, we have Seesaw Early Literacy and Seesaw ELD. I'm going to show you in a second what that looks like. Again, this is brand new for Seesaw. We have never done this before. Uh, you've seen the Seesaw Library. We shared a bit about how that has expanded. Uh, in addition to that, these are full curriculum packages. They're supplemental to your core curricula, um, and it may be something that your district or school has purchased for you. So what it will look like, I'm going to share my screen. 
is when you jump into the Seesaw Library. Um, so if I was in my account over here, I just clicked on library and it took me to the Seesaw Library. It will go to whatever grade level you have set for yourself, just like usual. But as you start scrolling down, check out all our featured content this month, um, you'll see that the premium supplemental curriculum is here. So my district has purchased both the early literacy and the English language development add-ons. So I go here and you may notice a very cool new navigation. Um, this is to both highlight all the different types of units and work that's gone into this supplemental package. Um, but also should be really nice and easy for you to find what you're looking for in relation to the core content that you're working on. Um, so I can see here all my units based on alphabetical principles first. This is based on the research of Dr. Louisa Motes and Dr. Wiley Blevins. Um, if I wanted to look at, let's say I'm already working on phonics and word recognition with my students, um, I can come here and see some of this awesome new content. You'll see there's a brand new collection, including high frequency words. This one has been a big hit because of you. You all have been asking for a high frequency word collection for a minute. Uh, so we're excited to, for this package, include 109 high frequency word lessons, um, all again with this kind of science of reading research that has gone behind it. So you see there's some analysis, they're looking for it in continuous text, um, but still has all the great features that Seesaw has to offer, like our formative assessment tools, so not only do you get that feedback right away about how the students are doing, but the students automatically get that feedback yeah. as well so that they know that they need to either try it again or that they got it right. Um, so this is just inside our Seesaw Early Literacy Package. You can see here there will be 30 units um, for pre-K through second grade. Really, really, really exciting work inside of here. Should go really, really well with everything that you're already working on um, and a really great complement to what you're doing in the classroom. We also have Seesaw ELD. Uh, so again, I'm in kindergarten here. I can click on my different grade levels in this new navigation here because of the way that we have focused our ELD content, which is that we're working within content area standards and the WIDA framework. So I could find like, if I'm about to do a language arts lesson on um, interpreting the story narrative in second grade, I could pre-teach this lesson to my students um, and then they will get to have an introduction that includes a lot of those concepts and skills from the content area standards they're gonna need. And they're going to be expected to produce language based on the language level they're at. So this one is for entering and beginning students. We have three levels of this same lesson. Um, and again, this is across content areas. So here they would come into after doing their introduction, they can start practicing these concepts and skills. Here's the characters, all the great things you expect from Seesaw. So we have audio supports on everything, English and Spanish audio directions, frames to make it really easy to be able to quickly share what you're thinking and, and answer the different questions and prompts. Our formative assessment again, so that they can get some support right away. You'll see our uh, Seesaw Stars crew here over Gosh, Melody is going to have to correct me, but I'm going to say over 50 families right now. Um, over 50 families that we're working with. It's probably way more than that now, Melody. You're going to, you can come back on and correct me when you're, when you're done. Um, but what's really great about having all them here is that it gives students both a window into students that maybe also represent them um, or a different way of being able to see students that are their same age actually doing the same language. And research shows this helps them to feel more confident and comfortable practicing English some of our great flex cards that Sarah was talking about are all built right here into the content already. So for ELD, again, it's broken up by different content areas. So language arts, math, science, and social studies. And you can see those different language bands inside of there. All this content is starting to release right now. We have some districts already in early access. So go to your account right now after this is done and check it out and see if it's already there. If not, definitely reach out to your administrator um, or to some representatives at your school and see if that's something that's coming in the works for you. With that, I'm going to hand it back to Melody, I believe, to close this out. Hello, hello. Thank you so much, Erin. And I really appreciate you mentioning Seesaw Stars in your ELD demo. Um, and just to... Um, Post uh, Seesaw Stars, we do have well over 50 families who are helping to create content for this, um, this beautiful uh, collection of lessons. So I'm so excited to be a part of 
of this for you and all the teachers who are watching today. Well, that concludes the presenter portion of our webinar. We have some resources to help you learn even more about Seesaw. Head to our teacher training site to find Quick Start PDF guides, short training videos, view recorded webinars, and more. Our goal is to provide you with easy ways to learn, not anything that will bog you down or confuse you. Teacher's time is very valuable to us. In the handouts tab, you will find a link to this site. Thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you again soon here at Seesaw.